Good evening and welcome to Match Fishing TV. In this week's show, we're going to be discussing two Fishermania qualifiers. The first of the Maver Match This qualifiers. We'll have a report from the annual Census Festival in France. And we'll be talking about a special send-off for a popular East Midlands angler. I'm joined in the studio as usual by Tom Scully. Good evening. And Matt Godfrey. Hey up everyone. So guys, Maver Match This has now kicked off. Uh, the first of the rounds at the Glebe last weekend. It was. Matt, how did it go? It was fantastic. It fished really well. Now the Glebe Match This qualifiers are always sellouts. People are itching to get them tickets every, every year. Um, and the first ones on the website to get the line through sold out. And um, this particular one were no different and it was won by a nice guy, Cy Fry, Mr. Simon Fry of Garbolino. He had £203, 12 ounces off Uglies Lake. Uh, stunning net of fish and it's always won with a massive weight at Glebe. Um, and you look at the backup weights, um, young Tom Edwards was second with £180. Um, Brett Chapman was third with £174. So it's fished, it's racks off. Um, some massive weights of fish. And I looked at Simon's net of fish off Uglies um, and the lake is on called Uglies. It's full of all the sort it's of... still got these big crocodiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He puts all the reject carp from all the other lakes into this lake. And I've seen this picture of Simon holding one of them and it's got a massive ump back on it, big stumpy tail. So he's obviously had a great day fishing. He's caught some on bomb and pellet to start off with, fish up to 14 pound. Um, and then he's coming on his pole line and caught some more later on. So fantastic performance, some lovely fish caught and a cracking day's fishing. I mean, Uglies is a zoo creature. It is zoo creature country, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting on that lake because it's actually regarded by the, the locals as being one of the harder lakes on the complex. Because it's not got, perhaps got as many fish in as you don't need as won. many bites, do you? Exactly, but it's won some massive matches in its time. I think last year Rob Button uh, won the Ivan Marks Memorial off it. Yeah, Certainly he did, he's yeah. done it a, a couple of times. And whenever there's a big event like this, it always seems to figure well. You know, and did, on uglies, would you set your stall out differently because you know you're going to be fishing for bigger fish, or is, is it just a case of you're going to be waiting long between bites? I don't know. I I think the thing about uglies is you haven't got to catch all day on it. Because the fish are so big, um, I'd probably be excited about drawing it because two or three hours into the match, you might have nothing in your net. But you've still got a chance. You've still got a chance in a big match like a match disqualifier. You could think, you could think last two hours, I'm going to catch some big fish late on, on my short line or down the edge. And you could catch £200 in a couple of hours on there. So I think that the exciting thing about drawing that lake is that even with a little bit of time left in the match, you're always in with a chance of winning. Definitely, some real features as well. There's, there's the island, isn't there? Yeah, which you yeah. need some you know, proper tackle to fish from. And there's some boards as well at one end of the lake. And you need, if you're going to fish there, you need some proper gear. So you, you do need to have some... Uh, Strap into your box. Yeah, you need some serious tackle set up if you yeah. set up if you can have a go on. More like it? charter fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Tom, there's been a, a slight change to the Maven match this um, qualifying procedure now? There has, yeah. Um, I mean, something that's always um, run alongside the Maver match this final has been the British Pole Championship final, which Maver have sponsored. And that was acted really as, as like a practice for the finalists of the Maver match this final because every finalist, every winner of a qualifier also qualified for the British Pole Champs final. But also, it's been another incentive because if you finished in the top six in a qualifier, you qualified for the final. Um, for the, for the pole, pole champs final, yeah, and it took place a week before or two weeks before as was last year the main um, Maven match this final, and again it was at Larford Lakes, um, and it proved really popular. But the problem that they've had is some of the um, qualifiers who have actually qualified to fish it haven't been able to make it because August is such a congested month in terms of fishing. You know, I mean, obviously the actual finalists themselves have always made it a priority to fish because it's a great way to practice for the final. But a lot of the other anglers who might have finished, you know, between second and sixth in the qualifiers haven't actually been able to make it because it's, it's clashed with things like the National, with our Evesham Championship. Um, it's just a very congested time of year, really. So but the, the Pole Championship final itself is well worth winning, isn't it? I mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. well-sponsored. Very well-sponsored. Um, pole up for grabs as well? Yeah, there's a, there's a put of pole up for it. There's, there's money. Um, you know, Phil, Phil Briscott may always just go out of his way to make his events very mm. well-sponsored. Well and that's, that's no exception. Um, so how's the format changed for this year then? Right, this year, every single winner of a qualifier will qualify for it, as per usual, in that, you know, if you win the match, if you win the major match, match this final, you also fish the pole champs final. But also, it's going to have an invited list of 16 anglers, 
uh, which greatly reduces the size of the final because normally it's a 24 peg final. Um, sorry, normally it's a 120 peg final for the British Pole Champs, spread over um, match lake and specimen lake. But this year it's just 40 anglers in that final, so it's cut it down in terms of numbers as well. And the prize fund is that still the same sort of sponsorship level? It hasn't really been speculated on yet, has it? No, it's not. So well, it's going to be interesting to see, but certainly, I mean, it's you know. I think you're absolutely right. If, if you just were to take Evesham the week before the Maven match this final, yeah, yeah. that is a clash. You know, the British Pole Championship final as a run-up to the Maven match this, or Evesham. Um, Evesham, is, the money might not be quite as big as it is in the Maven match this and, and going forwards, but it's been in the calendar for so long, mm. it's, it is a blue ribbon event. Yeah. And it is unfortunate there are so many events at that time of the year. Definitely. I raised the point to the Anglin Trust um, two years ago. You had basically six major team finals in six weeks. You had a Winter League final. Yeah. Crazy. You had Evesham, you had the National, you had the Winter League final, and the Maven Matches final. It basically fell sort of, you know, six in six weeks, yeah. pretty much. Um, it's been better this last couple of years because they have altered things around slightly, but August still is such a congested uh, month for a serious match angler. Okay. Fishermania, a couple more qualifiers there as well. Um, one weekend just gone on Monk Lake. Certainly was, and just like the Glebe fish really well, it looks like Monk Lake's fished just as well, if not better, with a winning weight of 259 pounds, a colossal weight of fish, um, took by Preston and Sonia Bates backed man, Jason Collins. So big well done to Jason for winning that one. Um, he drew peg 112 on Lake 3. And interestingly, he caught on pellets as well, so perhaps there's going to be a bit of a craze coming up. It's coming out of winter now, yeah. um, maggots and the fish want to start yeah, these wait little there, baits yeah. and stuff, perhaps slowing down a little bit. That's two big matches, one on pellets um, this weekend. But second place was to Matty Wiles. We know Matty, he fishes all our uh, club angler events and mm. events in the magazine. He had £220, so excellent backup weights as well. Um, it fished really, really well throughout. I think there were nine weights on the match um, over £100, and the lowest section winning weight on the match was £50. So there's been a hell of a lot of fish caught there this It week. was a good weekend for fishing all round. It was. Yeah, it, yeah. Was. No, it was a, none of the horrible Easter weather that we had. It was Everything was a bit more settled. Everything, it was good to be on the bank. Yeah. I think as well, like, every year at this time of year get a weekend don't you where yeah. all these fish think right come on let's get out of bed now it's time to have a munch and it looks like last weekend perhaps a couple of venues fished um so i've got my money on this weekend there'll yeah, be some absolutely. more big weights at some so. of our fisheries it's yeah, really yeah. Switch on this week, especially up north because you generally find it it sort of starts down south it's a couple of degrees warmer down south and you look at the venues that are fished well obviously monk um, lakes down south they'd leave obviously coming a bit more of the country but Next week, I think, for, for, for the Yorkshire venue, yeah, this will be the one where it all kicks off, I reckon. And, of course, it was the second Fishermania qualifier of the of the week. Um, we had one down at, where were we? Uh, Coleman's, Coleman's Cottage. Cottage. Yeah, Coleman's Cottage down in Essex. Um, that's fished really well as well. Um, another southern venue, uh, really prolific. Ross Harold actually won that one. It had 193.12. A uh, caught carp up in the water on pellets. Uh, the second weight angler was a lad who's really been doing well these last couple of years. He actually just signed for Dowa Dorkin at the back end of last year. Um, and that's a lad called Robbie Taylor. Um, he's come second. Again, you know, a big weight of a carp on pellets. So, as Matt says, it really is switching on to that. Definitely. Good yeah. looking lad, Robbie Taylor. And I reckon he's one of the best looking lads in match fishing. You reckon? Yeah, he could be a model, I'm telling you now. I won't go that far. I won't go that far. Definitely. Apparently, he's no good with women, though, you know. Is he not? No. Right. <laughs> there speaks a voice of experience. <laughs> So while England was fishing its brains out last weekend, Matt, you were on the other side of the channel. You were on the Census Festival. I certainly was, and I wish, Rog, I could tell you that the fishing was <laughs> You wish you could tell us everything that happened. Yeah, yeah. I also <laughs> wish I could tell you that the weather was as nice, because it wasn't. We went out there, myself and Lee Carey went out to fish the um, Census Festival. It's an event that's run for three years now. This was the third year of the event. Um, it's organised by John Desk of Census. And yeah, I know, I know Census. John well. Yeah, I'm he were there. there. Nice bloke. He's got some interesting ideas about fishing, hasn't he? He's a very, very, very good angler. Very good. Incredible to watch. But no, it was a fantastic event. It's the first time I've been. Fished over two days. He's got a very attractive wife as well as John. I met her yesterday. Yes, yeah. yes. He's, uh, yes, I went to their house some years ago and um, saw his, his kit making room and his ground back preparation room. Incredible setup he's got there. Anyway, oh. sorry. I'm just <laughs> <spoiling> your story. <laughs> Turning into anglers' wives, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, you know, it was really good. I really enjoyed it for the first visit. Um, there was 84 anglers on it in total. It's a two-day event. Um, it was meant to be one day on a river and one day on some lakes at Chateau Dunn. Um, however, we had torrential rain on Thursday. It rained from the start of the day to the end of the day. It was freezing cold rain with an easterly wind. I've never been so cold in five years of fishing. Sat in the south of France in back in, in early April thinking, oh, I'm going to get a suntan here. No <laughs> chance. I was chilled to the bone. Um, but so, it, so that's wind burn? Definitely. Yeah. It meant that they had to cancel the event off, off the river and put it on the lakes both days. Um, which a lot of anglers were pleased about because they got an extra day's practice on the lakes. We had yeah. a, a practice match on there. Um, but there were four, 13 or 14 anglers from England went over to fish it. Um, some, some of the England team went over, Des Ship, Callum Dix, Cameron Hughes. Um, and they did really well. The actual winner was Herve Cavalli, a French angler. Um, he had a section win and a section second. Um, and second place on the same points but with a lower weight was English angler, um, Reeve and Nathan Zadarby back man, Cameron Hughes. Oh, um, excellent, well done, Cam. Yeah, he's another young angler that's come right into the limelight, like we talked about Matt Derry the other week. Yeah. Mm. Um, Cameron's also made the European team for this year, so we'll be going out to fish that. And yet again, he proved, him, proved himself in France. Um, he caught most of his fish on the slider, um, which is another reflection of how cold it was. They were all out in the middle of the lake, yeah. in deep water. Um, also in the frame from England, Des Ship. Well, he's never far no away. surprise there. Oh, he's, there there. he's there or thereabouts all the time. I'll tell you what, he must moan his fish on because I could hear him two lakes away moaning about his peg on the Friday. <laughs> Um, but he still somehow managed, he's got a cold as well. And, but he still got in the frame. He still managed mm. to get in the frame. I mean, he it's funny that, because he said to me, I spoke to him on the phone yesterday, and he said, I drew, I drew two good pegs. So he, got, he must have known they were good at the time. No, yeah. Des never admitted <laughs> he drew two <laughs> good <laughs> pegs. He said, he said oh, I, I did well, but I had two good pegs. I said, so. But no, it were really interesting. I think uh, at the end of it, I was a little bit like, oh, it's a little bit peggy. Um, it's a long way to go, and it's quite expensive to fish that style match. I was talking to Lee Carey on the way home and we said we'll definitely go again because we learnt loads about that yeah. style of fishing. It's nothing like England. Um, you're catching species of fish you wouldn't catch in England, like we caught the Poisson chat, which are little catfish, right spiky little things that are absolutely horrible. They've got spikes on either um, side of the pectoral fins. And you one had some thought of hooking them, didn't you? Ridiculous. I figured out the best way to unhook them. I had five kilos of these. someone else to do it. <laughs> I needed, well, I needed a, a little lad to come and help me unhook them. <laughs> but you'd swing them in. The best way was to knock, bank, like, like land them on your leg so that all the fins stuck out. And then once the fins were stuck out, you could grab them so the, these spiky fins stuck through your fingers. Like but then... Up, like trying to pick up a porcupine. Yeah. <laughs> And then you had the problem of getting your hook out because I don't know if you've ever caught that little rass and stuff in the sea. Yes, yeah. They bite your hook. Yeah. So you can't actually unhook them. So you have to squeeze them really hard. No, no, you have to talk to them nicely. Get them to open the mouth to get your hook out. But they were, it was really interesting catching different fish like that. So anybody um, who fancies something different in the fishing, fancies catching some different species, that event's open to everyone. To end but up. the whole culture is different to, to festival fishing in the UK, isn't it? I mean, the draw's more relaxed. Yeah. It's, you know, the social side of it is far more relaxed. Definitely. The, the fishing is, it's different methods and different species, you've said, with the, yeah. with the Poisson Chat. But um, I, I would certainly recommend, as I say, I went over there as a guest of Census many, many years ago. And to see the setup and the way that they fish over there, it really is an eye opener. Yeah. You know, they might only be 100 miles away, but they might as well be the other side of the world. It's different. Totally it? different. I th yeah. yeah, the thing that interested me that you said about yeah. it was the, the payout structure. Just tell, I've never considered paying a match out. It's like crazy. That. It's absolutely crazy, right? On the Friday, they had this practice match, and he's announcing the payout in French. And I'm trying to understand him in French, John Desk. And I'm sure I thought, he can't have said that, but he did. He said what I thought he did. They paid the top three on each lake. Um, 200 euros for the winner of the lake, then 60 and 40 euros for second and third on the lake. And then the top half of the anglers on that lake all got 20 euros back. So they got the money back. And it was the same on the festival. They paid 4,000 pounds to their winner, 2,000, 1,000, down to about 250 euros for 12th or 13th place. And then up to 21st place, everyone got 200 euros. So and you, got you the money sneaked back. into that list, didn't you? I did. I managed to sneak into 12th. 
So I'll fetch you a few beer tokens. Yeah, back. you did well, mate. Did well. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. One, one final mention must go out to young Bradley Gibbons, um, young angler. He's 18 years old. He's in the England junior setup, and he came fifth overall. So real good performance in front of some top class anglers. Well done, Bradley. Well done. Well okay, done. well, we're going to take a break now, but after the break, we've got an interview with Cameron Hughes that Matt did while he was at the Census Festival. Part two, we've got the report on the Easter Festival at Mukno, Browning Silverlight League, some feedback on our veterans conversation, another separated at birth, but as promised, here's an interview with Cam Hughes that Matt Godfrey did on the recent Census Festival. Bonjour, madame et monsieur, and I'm talking French because we're in France and having just fished the Census Festival, and with me I've got the individual second place man, Mr Cameron Hughes. Well done, sir. Thank you very much. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, it's been a really good weekend. Well, let us have a little look at what you've won. Look yeah. at that! And along with it, how many pennies? Two and a half thousand euros. Jeez. Lovely. You're going to buy me a beer later? Mm, if you're quick. Fantastic. <laughs> now, you've had two lovely days fishing, haven't you? Yep. And tell, tell me a little bit about them. Well, day one was really good, to be honest. Um, I drew peg 64 and yeah. I had a lovely day on the slider. Yeah. And I had two skimmers about a pound, pound and a half. Um, two Carasios, two pound, nice. And 20 or so smaller fish. Lovely. For six kilo, 410, which was enough to win the section. Brilliant. And what um, about today? Today, I've drawn what I thought would be the best peg on the match, as it won the match yesterday with the 11 kilos. So it's really up for it. Um, it's not fished quite that well. I've come second in that section today with um, 15 catfish and one skimmer for a kilo and tank 20 grams. Oh, me now, so that's been a lot harder, hasn't it? <laughs> a lot harder, yeah. Um, no chance winning the section, really, at three kilo, which is quite a big difference on the day. Yeah. And there's been a few other English boys done well, haven't there? There has. Dead Ship was third, wasn't he? He was third. And young Bradley young Gibbons. Bradley. Fourth. Where did Bradley were fourth. So, brilliant. Mm. Well done, mm. sir. Are you coming back next year? Oh, yeah. Awesome. I might join you. Mm. Let's Maybe go and have a beer. We all win in. Great interview, Matt. We're good. Well done to Cameron. I still never got a beer out of him. He owes me 20 quid as well still from last year, doesn't he? He, well, is, he is one of the tightest men in England. We'll go round. Sent boys round. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll get him at Evesham. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Easter Festival at Mukno, uh, the second part of it last week. Yeah, this was a great um, great event to follow on Facebook, it really was. I mean, uh, Cattle Hughes won the first yeah. um, festival, which was three days, and then after that it went straight into the second one. And again, um, you know, Cattle was up there, um, pushing them all the way. <coughs> all the way. It was Michael Buckwelder, uh, Preston Innovations, back tangler, who's actually just got a place in the Irish feeder team, um, because I believe his mum's actually Irish, so he gets in, okay. gets in through, <laughs> through that route. But... Um, you know, he's, he's done brilliant. He's, he's pushed him all the way. And on, on the last day, the weather was horrendous. And I, I looked on my phone in the morning and they both put pictures of the pegs up. And you know what them Irish locks are like. You've got wave this cycle yeah, yeah. onto the boxes and things. But Michael Butwell did enough. He, uh, he won the festival. He had a weight of 24 kilos, 150 grams over three days, which wow. is pretty good fishing, really. Uh, cattle had 22 kilos. Um, so he was a couple of kilos off. But... Knowing them as they do, they stop together. I imagine they'll be sharing the winnings anyway. So, I so from now on, it's Michael O'Buckwalder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll remember that again for you. <laughs> and the Browning um, Silverlight Festival. It was, yeah, it's, a, it's actually um, a winter league that they run at Aston Park Fisheries, just off junction 31 of the M1 at Sheffield. Lovely little fishery, ran by um, an ex Barnsley Blacks angler, actually, Alex Mitchell. Okay. Um, it's a great fishery. Takes a lot of pride in doing what's best for the anglers does Alex and this league's a perfect example of this, he's got Brown into back it 
um, and is um, guaranteed that the winner of the league gets a thousand pound cash. Excellent. Um, and Browning's backing includes uh, Browning giving a silver light pole um, away to the winner of the final match, which is a it great ensures idea. Ensures that everybody stays yeah. the course. Yeah. And we, I mean, we've run events before and had problems with anglers not turning up to the last match. Yeah. And what a great idea to get them all to turn up. It is an excellent idea, especially on leagues where you know odd points are going to change. Yeah. And change the outcome. That's, that's terrific. It is. I mean, the fishing has been really good as well. Looking at the weights, considering it's a silverfish um, focused event. You know, there's a lot of hide in, in Aston, a lot of roach and a lot of chub, but I think the last, last match one was £76. Yeah, it, it was. Um, Dave yeah. Micklethwaite won it, um, £76. There were two £50 weights, a few £40 weights, and all these are silverfish. Dave, on that last match, he caught by just fishing 13 metres on the pole, loose feeding maggots, and he's caught some fish on the bottom to start with, some skimmers and odd hide. And as the day's gone on, the fish have com started competing for food, and he's ended up catching them shallow on maggots. And seventy-six pound of silverfish shallow on maggots. That is a fantastic day's fishing. Great day's fishing, and yeah. like I said, the backup way it's unbelievable. And the thing is about Aston, it's the lakes they fish on, um, the Split Lake and Lily Pond, lovely ponds, nice platforms. You get a lovely breakfast there, and it's a round lake, and it's pretty fair mm. fishing. Like people get bites all the way around. Um, so if you're looking for somewhere to go for some good silverfish sport next year, it's definitely worth a look. It is. That, that's where he's really priding himself on, people getting bites, as Matt says. You know, and he's, he's actually spent a lot of money putting an aeration system in, so that even when a lot of venues freeze early in the so year, so free, January, clear January, water. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can fish. And because of the species you stock, cold water fish like Ida, etc., you get bites. Even in, I've been there in, in January when half the lake's been frozen. I took a young lad down and wanted to go fishing once, and you know, he caught loads of fish. I'm like... I can't believe it this weather. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. But winner of the league, picking up the thousand pound was Leon Hardwick, oh, um, Mosbury yeah. tackle box man. We know Leon personally, don't we? Yeah, Lovely good luck. kid. Awesome, awesome angler. Um, he went down to Atticus last year, didn't he? And framed in the festival, I think, on his first ever Is visit. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he sort of grew up fishing with Sheffield clubs, went onto the open match scene, wins loads of matches, and he's going to win this one. Nick Gray was second. Um, he picked up 500 quid for coming second. Um, and Bob Bell were third. He picked up three hundred and fifty pounds for third in the league. So it's a great payout and plenty great. of good anglers, loads of bites. Great festival. Last week, as we were discussing um, veterans, and obviously I'd got some. Uh, I was quite vociferous in my defence of us fifty-five years. I was not being <laughs> veterans, but I understand we've had some feedback from um, from one of the top anglers. Yeah, Stuart Lister was second uh, on the veterans festival. We talked about. He came back. He's actually written me a really nice blog, which will be on Pole Fishing website. Um, later today, um, but you know, it, it goes into some thoughts about what constitutes a veteran and some of the things we talked about. He did make a very good point, though, actually, and, and I must agree with him. Me and Joe were sat there voicing our opinions. He said, if you had man and Joe's age together, you probably still wouldn't be old enough to fish the veterans festival at Whitehead, which, which is just about right. You know, I think we, we might <laughs> just qualify. But... So it's a few years off yet. So <laughs> you can say what you're right. Yeah. But what he did say, you know, which I think is actually a fair point, he said. If you consider that most of them anglers fishing that festival would have been match fishing from when they were teenagers, yeah. um, they've all got, well, near enough, 40 years plus match fishing experience. So looking at it that way, yeah, a, a veteran, he takes the definition of a veteran to mean somebody who's very practised at something yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. and knows it well, maybe, maybe that's right. Well, maybe Stuart's got a point. I mean, as I say, my view on veteran, when I, when I think of veteran, I think of somebody that's been around for a long time, which Stuart is absolutely right, you have been around for a long time. But I think it's when you sort of come into the twilight of your career, that to me is a veteran. Um, so maybe we're going to have a veterans classification and maybe we're going to have a wrinkly classification. <laughs> You've got to be on a Zimmer frame or something to go and fish them. But It's an interesting one. You know, when I was talking about the fishing at Aston, I actually spoke to Alex Mitchell um, and he runs quite a lot of veterans events there. And I think he's tried both age gaps for his veterans matches. 55s or 60s. Yes, he started at 60s and he said he didn't get, he got a few turn yeah. up, but as soon as he dropped it to 55, oh, they were mega, mega popular. As we discussed last yeah. week, Matt, with, with Joe and, and Tom, um, you know, uh, without any doubt at all, 55 commercially makes yeah, sense. Yeah. There are more active match anglers than, at 55 than there are at 60. Yeah. Um, because at 60 you are starting, or a lot of anglers will start to feel like a veteran in body as well as in knowledge. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I can't argue that at all. Yeah, yeah. 55 from a commercial view, but from keeping entries up, 55 makes sense. But are you really, you know, in the twilight of your career? Yeah, I, I yeah. don't think so. 
But Stuart, thanks for the, thanks for the feedback. Um, now, slightly sad news, but a, a great way of going into it. Um, a match angler that I knew, um, Alan Lemon from um, the Wisbeach area, sadly died in January quite suddenly. But his family and friends gave him a brilliant send off this weekend just gone. Um, there was obviously quite a delay between the funeral and the send off in quest and what have you. And, and it was discovered that um, Alan had died from a blood clot. But, um, and he was no mean angler, Alan. He fished for Mark One Census. Um, and back in the days that I was running the East Midlands Winter League, Alan was just coming into the game. Always a nice young lad. Um, he was only in his late 40s when he died in January. Won a national championship, a Division Three national. Wow. Um, and this was back in the day, and I keep going referring to the olden days, he won eight grand from Billy Nutt. You know, scary, if you had a full bet in those days with the bookie, it was a it was a life changing sum of money that you were collecting. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it was the Fisher Mania or Maver Match this of its day. So he um, he won Division Three National, won eight grand for that. His nickname was Jockey, and we all joke about what we're going to do when we die. And yeah. I mean, I remember saying as a match angler that, oh yeah, I want to get thrown in the Trent, or I want to get thrown in the Neen, or you know, Alan, they they actually put his ashes mixed it with a huge bowl of census ground bait and his entire family gathered together on Tidgo, peg 13, which was, you know, considered to be not a particularly good peg, but there's a few bream around at, at, at certain times of year. And Alan got himself balled in to Tidgo. Brilliant. Wow. So, Brilliant. Alan, um, I hope you were looking down from somewhere and watching it because it was a fantastic send off. Um, great feedback from everybody that was involved. It was a pleasure to know Alan. I was honored to know Alan. Um, but what a way to be sent off. Well, well done to everybody over in the, in the East Midlands circuit. Awesome. For giving on the great Fantastic. So, um, back on to news of today. Matt, we've got um, some changes to the Fishermania format, I think. Yeah, we certainly have. Um, an interesting one. Um, obviously, the international match that took part on the second day um, of the Fishermania weekend was always really popular. People went to watch it, um, but that's changed this year. And instead of having the England team and invited teams from um, France and Holland and Scotland and Wales, etc., there, um, what the, um, what's actually happening is the fastest loser from the actual Fishermania um, semi final, so the 32 anglers that qualify for the semi final, 16 will go through to the Fishermania, to the Fishermania final. final, and the 17th place, the fastest loser, will represent England in the international event which will take place the day after the Fishermania final. Represent England as a member of an England team? No, no. as an individual. It's going to be an individual event. Um, what if he's Welsh? Ooh, that could be <laughs> dodgy, couldn't it? <laughs> so he'll represent his country? Whatever. Yeah, certainly yeah. will. Um, and there'll just be one angler from each of the other countries invited over to fish against him, so it'll be sort of an individual-based international match. Okay. Interesting format. I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely sold on it myself, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot going on <coughs> that weekend, isn't there? And it's almost distracting, really. Yeah. Um, that, that's my thoughts. I think the focus is, was, and always will be the Fishermania final. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah, that was always, you know, the, the, when you're putting together an event like that and the setup costs or the setup structure, the logistics are the same whether it's for one day or two days, pretty much. Yeah. So it makes sense to try and get maximum. Um, Maximum take from from your footage, from your commentary positions, from your burger vans. Yeah. You know, if everybody can be there for two days, it obviously makes a lot more sense. But it has always been the second day of Fishermania for me has always been a bolt on to what can we do with the kit we've got here. Yeah. Um, certainly the, the the international, the home international as it was, then the full international team event as it became, it, it grew in popularity, but. Honestly, I don't think whatever they do is going to match the excitement of the main event, which no. is the Fishermania individual final. The only thing I will say is, I personally, I would definitely rather see it how it was with um, Will Rays and Alan Scothorne fishing yeah. um, in an exciting match. Like Will Rays and caught that carp a couple of years ago, right on the whistle. Yeah, and huge people fish. talked yeah. about that yeah, all they did. year. And you've got a massive crowd behind him. That was him. a game changer. I mean, it was, that was pure drama. That was theatre. Yeah, mm. and I don't think you can, you're going to have that same effect with this no. new match. Um, so I think, personally, I'd rather see it yeah, back I think it's it going to be a scene, I think the Sunday now is going to be a wind down, yeah. as mm. opposed to a continuation of a, of a great event. So, separated at birth this week, Tom. 
Who, who, who's come in? Yeah, uh, Kevin Pax actually sent us an email with a, a suggestion on it, and it's my, my good mate Dan Ashington, and apparently it looks a little bit like Dan Cole. Now, <laughs> I'm showing my lack of knowledge about sport yet again, because I didn't know the person who suggested I was last week or anybody, but I don't know who Dan Cole is. Oh, I do. I know Dan Cole ever so well. I'm a Leicester Tigers rugby fan. Oh, right. <laughs> and Dan Cole is what is the best tight prop in the world. He's not the best looking. <laughs> no, he's definitely not the best looking, but he what can push. Him? He can bend over and push. And, <laughs> well, and, and, and I'd like to see Dan in the in, in a, he can in bend a rugby over, Hey, Dan can bend over and push, I've been told. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, not standing, I'm not standing by that one. I think you're much better looking Dan than he is. So. <laughs> and I, I, I did hear that somebody said that you look like Stan Laurel. I don't know who he is either, so I'll probably argue <laughs> with that. <laughs> okay, um, coming up in next week's show, We'll be looking at the Woodland View Fishermania. Woodland View may have a match this. The Drennan Knockout Cup qualifier at Barston Lakes and Fishermania at Viaduct. Um, Matt, Tom, thank you very much. And thank we'll you. leave you with the news that Des Shit was less than impressed with Preston Innovation's latest range of headwear. See you next week. Mm -hmm.